It's been a while. How you doing? Did you enjoy your break? You have a good Christmas. Get a lot of presents. Starting the year as we mean to go on with terrible, pathetic jokes. Now, off the back of that whopping Zeppelin 50th anniversary in November, the Zeppelin lesson requests went nuts. And one song that was coming up daily was Achilles' Last Stand. Now that song title may be harder to pronounce fast than the actual song is to learn on guitar. That's a lie. It's pretty difficult. So let's get to it. Now before we get started, we need to talk about some very important things. Number one, tuning. We're in standard tuning. I can hear you all cheering, saying, thank God, can't take another fact fact. Believe me, there's not many of us that can. Okay, number two, we're gonna be learning every part that I consider to be a main or integral part to the tune. And if it's a harmony line, we're gonna learn the more dominant line. And if you want the rest of it, the tab is gonna be on my Patreon. Now, we are definitely learning the guitar solo, so you can all calm down, don't worry. But it's over 10 minutes long and it's laced with a really cool lick there and an awesome riff there. And if we went through it note for note, it would just be too much. This video would be about 10 weeks long and uh, none of us have got time for that. But what I would encourage you to do is um, learn everything from the lesson today and then get into the mindset of Jimmy and go off and try and work out the other little bits that you like because um, what we learn will be useful. Take it with you, okay? And thirdly, because there was three essential points, is remember, if you do get into this video and you're lost somewhere in the middle of it and you think, God, I like this video, like it, hit subscribe, hit the bell next to it, and then leave me a comment below. Just tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like, um, and I'll delete that comment, and just pretend that you didn't say anything and assume that you loved it, because that's the way that this channel works, okay? Good. I'm glad we've covered all that. I'm gonna drink this really hot brew, and then we're gonna get cracking. Have fun. So for this awesomely iconic introduction, we've got two shapes to learn. The first one is an E minor nine. That chord is lifted straight out of an Australian soap opera. And the other one is an F sharp minor flat six. For the E minor nine, I like to use my index finger on the second fret of the A, pinky on the fourth fret of the D, and second finger on third fret of the B string. You could use your third finger, but I think the second finger just feels a little bit more natural in terms of spacing. 
For the F sharp minor six, I would advise you to use your thumb hooking over on the second fret of the E for the root note. Third and fourth fingers together on the perfect fifth and the octave. Use your index on the second fret of the G string and then your second finger for the third fret of the B. We'll go through the picking pattern in a second. It's pretty straightforward, literally just arpeggiating up the chord. But at the top, we have this little pull off pattern. It's going to be the second fret of the E with the index finger pull off to open, third fret of the B pull off to open, and then hit the open G. So your picking pattern, starting on the E minor 9, is literally going to go from the low E to the B string in order. Then you've got the little pull-off riff. And then I'm going to grab the F sharp minor flat 6, same picking pattern. Same pull-off pattern. And you can just practice alternating between the two. So on that last repeat, before we go into that really cool main riff, we're going to change the chord from F sharp minor flat six to F sharp sus four with some open strings in there. So the thumb and the third finger stay in the same place. Index finger stays in the same place. Um, you're actually going to hit the G string straight after the A. And then put your pinky down on the fourth fret of the G. So you've moved it from the um, D string to the G string. That's the sus4 note. And then I just hit the top two strings open. And because I had my volume on about seven, um, as you take it up to full there, you get this kind of swell, bringing the dynamic up, and then you're ready to hit that big main riff. Now, this section is absolutely badass. I've said that before, I know, but this time, right, I'm being serious. Before we get into it, let's learn the three main shapes that we need. Three little triads. Sounds like a terrible kid's story, that, doesn't it? So the first one is F sharp minor, ninth fret of the high E, index finger, and then coming down diagonally, nine, 10, 11 index second third. Move that back two frets or a whole tone, E minor, and then index finger across the seventh fret of the GBE giving us part of a B minor. Just playing that you can already hear you've got foundations there. So we're going to hit that F sharp minor once and then the E minor twice. And then I do this. So we're going to slide into the seventh fret of the D with the index finger. And then hit it a few times. We'll go through that in a sec. And chromatically move up to the eighth fret and the ninth fret of the D. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Now, loads of people play this different ways. I like to do a little pull off here from the seven to the open D. And then I hit the E on the seventh fret of the A string. Then the low open E. 
and then that top sort of B minor triad. <laughs> I feel like the pull-off just gives it um, a little bit of whip that you need. Uh, it really conveys the kind of like attitude and aggression. <laughs> On the track, I feel like you can also hear the seventh fret of the D string, the note A, and that last chord sometimes, <laughs> kind of making it like a D6. Um, so if you want to add that in, knock yourself out. I like to just play the triad. So make your decision, but choose wisely. The next section is pretty straightforward because you've already got the bones of it down. You're going to be hitting an open E and then F sharp minor, E minor. Open E again. And then we've got a couple of different variations that we can do with this D chord here. So I've got my second and my third fingers on the seventh fret of the G and the B and my index finger on the fifth fret of the high E, top of a D major triad. Here are the different variations that you can do with this D major triad. First one, start without the index finger on, hit the open E, and then put it back down on the fifth fret. You can do that the opposite way around, so index finger on the fifth fret and then take it off to open. And the third one that I do is I'll start with my index finger on the fifth fret and then I'll add the pinky to the seventh fret. Now, this is the way that I do it in a rotation of four repeats. Okay, so now we're onto the fast, repetitive, chromatic double stops. You're going to start on the ninth fret of the D and the G with the third finger flat, hitting both notes at the same time. But you're also going to need the seventh fret, the eighth fret, and the ninth fret. All double stops, okay? So breaking it down into three, the first time we're going to go nine, seven, eight, nine. Second time, we're going to go seven, eight, nine, nine. Notice the alternate pick in there because it's faster. And then the third time, we're going to go seven, eight, nine, seven, nine, ten. And you can add a little bit of vibrato to the tens at the end. Let's put that all together. In this section, we have got two guitar parts that are harmonizing in thirds as they ascend in thirds, which is really cool. And I'm going to show you the more dominant line from the track. If you want the other one, you can grab the tab on my Patreon. Also, if you don't know what major and minor thirds are, check out my music theory playlist. There's a lesson on thirds, there's a lesson on harmonizing the major scale and a bunch of other stuff. But I'd advise you to um, understand what we're doing rather than just learning the notes because you can't do much more with that. So what I'm going to do right now is just show you all the major and minor thirds and shout out the root note that goes with them and then you can go back through and add the pattern in. It'll make it way easier, way quicker. Low E, third fret, major third. Fifth fret, minor third. Seventh fret, minor third. Eighth fret, major third. Tenth fret, major third. Then we've got a string change. A, seventh fret, minor third. 
Ninth fret, minor third. Tenth fret, major third. Twelfth fret, minor third. Fourteenth fret, minor third. Then we change to the D string. Tenth fret, major third. Twelfth fret, major third. Fourteenth fret, minor third. Sixteenth fret, minor third. Seventeenth fret, major third. And to finish, you're going to hit the fourteenth fret of the B and then the 16th fret of the G twice. And then all you need to do to match it to the track is play the third interval and then the root note and move it all the way through. lesson we're covering anything that I consider to be integral to the tune like a very obvious main part uh, it's over 10 minutes long and it's laced with like a really cool little lick there and a really awesome riff there but um, I want to focus on the main parts now if there's two or three harmony lines um, I'm going to teach you one and if you want the rest um, go and grab the tab on my patreon I've put it all on there and I've annotated it as always so we've got these two little raked lines, very, very cool. Um, the first one starts with the ninth fret of the G, index finger, 10th fret of the B, second finger, and then the 12th fret of the high E with the fourth finger. You're going to rake your pick across. That's where you kind of put pressure on. Let the pick kind of tick down over the strings. I equate it in lessons to the little thing at the top of the Wheel of Fortune as it goes Okay, you're not strumming, you're raking, let the pick tick over the strings. After you've hit the 12, index finger to the 9th fret of the E and then 2nd finger to the 10th fret of the B. Then we're going to bend the 10th fret of the B up, whole tone, down, and then the 8th fret. Then you're going to move that whole thing back a whole tone and back to the seventh fret. Now, I feel like he should have hit the eighth fret there, but on the record, it sounds like um, he hits the seventh fret of the, the G the first time. Okay. And then we go 10th fret of the B, seventh fret of the B, seventh fret of the G. Okay, then it repeats the first one exactly the same. And then this time, it sounds like he does hit the eighth fret of the B. And then we're going to do the same ending. But we add two extra notes onto the end. Seventh fret of the B. Eighth fret of the B. You can play that as a slide if you want. tell you something just real quick okay me and you are about to learn the guitar solo from Achilles last stand and my ass has gone numb so I'm gonna go off stretch my legs get a brew but I need you to do me a favor okay drop a like on this video hit subscribe and the bell next to it so that you could be the first one to find out the next time my ass goes numb okay and drop me a comment below letting me know what you want from my kitchen. You can have a brew, a brew dog, I'll make you a little sandwich, okay? Matcha tea, whatever you want, let me know.
I've broken this down into numerous manageable sections, as always, and I would encourage you to work through it methodically. Get the information in, learn all the right notes, and then you can work on the technique and delivery. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of something, okay, reading through a tab on the fly and then thinking, what was the start? Also, remember that this is the way that I play it. It's what's comfortable for me after working it out by ear. So if Jimmy does it differently, or you want to put your own spin on things, that's cool. But be nice about it. Don't start raving on in the comments, okay? Because I'll win. They're my comments. Right, here's the first lick. So you're going to start by sliding into the ninth fret of the D with the second finger, ninth fret of the G with the third, and then seventh fret of the high E with the index. Drop down to the seventh fret of the B with the index. And then you're going to hit the ninth fret of the G twice with the third finger. Then we've got this really kind of swooping whole tone bend on the eighth fret of the B up to the 10. And the same kind of thing on the seventh fret of the G. And then we've got this double stop on the fifth fret of the G and the B, second and third fingers. And you're going to hit it twice. I also prep my index finger on the third fret of the high E because we're going to need that for the next part. So keeping that C major triad shape on, you're going to start by hitting the G string, then the high E string. Then put the pinky on the fifth fret of the high E. Then you're going to do a hammer on pull off on the top string and then take the second finger back a fret to the fourth fret of the G, hit that note, and then strum the whole chord. What you've done is gone from C to E minor. If you took your D minor shape here, look, moved it up two frets, it's E minor, um, and the chord progression is going E minor C. So now you understand why he's doing what he's doing. So we hit the G, then the B, and then we have this little pattern. So that's a hammer on pull off on the high E, B string, hammer on pull off again, and then move your second finger up to the five and put the high E on the five. Okay, so you've just got five, five, five on the top three strings. Hit the G and then an upstroke on that chord. Take a little bit of practice to get that with the track, but I feel like that's close to what's going on. Here's the next part. Index finger on the seventh fret of the B, second finger on the eight, pinky on the 10. Pick each one, and then we have this little legato run. So that's hammering on from the eight to the 10, pull off back to the eight, and then pull off back to the seven. And then you're gonna pick eight, seven, eight or with a kind of staccato delivery. And then we've got this whole tone bend, 10th fret of the high E. And then you can let it down in a kind of a apocalyptic way. Carrying on that staccato vibe, we're going to hit the 12th fret of the B, then the E with the index finger, then the 14th fret of the high E, and then you're going to bend up a semitone, release, and pull off back to the 12, and then do that again.
The second one just has a little bit more of a push and sustain. Hit the 12 again. 14 and then that semitone again. So effectively you get the same kind of thing three times in a row. Now you're gonna bend the 15 up whole step. Kind of let it down and then you're gonna hit the 13th fret of the B twice. Again, that's that C note to match the chord. And then we have this um, little descending run. Staccato again. 12 on the B, 13, index second finger. And then you're gonna hit 14 on the G, back to 12 on the B. 12 on the G, 14 on the D. Stepping down. Next little section. So we're going to hit the 14th fret of the D where we finish with the third finger up to the 12 and the 14 on the G. And then you've got a double um, whole tone bend. As you let it down, pull off back to the 12 and then hit the 14th fret of the D twice. And then you've got this. Again, we're gonna be walking our way up from the 14th fret of the D. 12, 14 on the G. 12, 13 on the B. And then you've got this little legato run. So that's pulling off from 15 to 13 to 12 on the B and then 13 to 12, down to 14 on the G. And then you're gonna hit the 12 again on the B, 14 again on the G. And then you've got this little bit at the end. So that's picking 12 on the B, pulling off 13 to 12. I found picking, picking, pulling, rather than a hammer on pull off, um, kind of follow the accent in of the track just a little bit more. 14 on the G, 12 on the B, to conclude. When you've got something tricky like that, I find it helps to just do that little bit over and over again. Really get it in the mind, muscle memory, and then you won't trip over it when it comes to that part of the solo. Next little part. So walking up the B string, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14 on the high E. And then you're gonna hit the 14 again and do a hammer on to 15 with a pinky, pull back off to the 14, pull back off to the 12 and then hit the 14 again. Hold it there with a little bit of vibrato and then that note is gonna start your little um, descending run. So this little descending run can be a bit mad, so I've broken it down into even smaller chunks. Starting on that 14th fret with the third finger on the high E, pull off to the 12, and then go back and forth between the pinky, 15 on the B, and the 12 on the high E. Then we have this little lick. So that's picking the 12 on the B, hammer on pull off to the second finger on the 13, and then come down to the third finger on the 14th fret of the G, and then back to the 12 on the B.
Then we've got this lick. So we're going to start by pulling off the 14th fret of the G to the 12 with the 3rd and 1st fingers, down to the 14 on the D. And then we've got this little flat 3rd finger roll where it hits the 14th fret of the G, then the D. And then to finish, we've got a hammer on pull off, 12, 14, 12 on the G, and then hit 14 on the D twice. And there's a very cheeky little 12th fret of the G push at the end, a little micro bend. So that was three parts, and then we can try and merge them together. And when you pick up the speed like that, it's like, whoa, who played that? Was it me? Anybody see me? You did. Good. That's how it goes down. So we start with a very quick slide into the 16th fret of the G with the second finger, and then we're going to hit 15 on the B and the E with the index, barred flat. 17 on the B with the third finger, and then very quickly back and forth between 15 and 17, E, B. Big whole tone bend on the 17th fret of the high E, and just gradually let it down. It kind of goes a little bit dead in the middle, it sounds like he's accidentally muted it. And once you've released it, you can just hit a single 17. 12th fret with the index finger twice. And then a very quick uh, whole tone bend on the 15th fret of the high E, up and down. And a very quick little pull off lick. 15th fret of the high E, pull off to 14, pull off to 12, and then pick the 14 again. From this point, we don't pick anything else in our little run. You're then going to hammer on back to the 15, pull off to the 14, pull off to the 12. Now leaving that 12 ringing out, you're going to hammer on pull off the third finger to the 14, and then just hammer your finger down onto the 15th fret of the B, and bend it up. And then pick the pre-bend release for the first time. Once it's come down, you're going to hit the 13th fret of the B with the index finger, 14th fret of the G with the second finger, and then slide that 13 back to the 12. It's really cool. I feel like the uh, constant legato there and the sustain notes just match the dynamic, um, and he didn't pick until that pre-bend release. Next little lick. So starting on the 12th fret of the G and the B with the index finger. Pinky on the 15th fret of the B. Up to the 12, then the 14 on the high E. And then we've got one of those little legato pull-off licks again. You've already done that, so you should be able to do it. Come back to the 12th fret of the high E, and then we've got this single string ascension all the way up to a 20th fret bend on the high E, okay? And it's gonna go 12, 14, 15, 17, 19, and then bend the 20 up a whole step. Then you're gonna pre-bend release, 19, 17, and then finish on the 19 with some vibrato.
Then we've got these bands. Whole tone bend on the 17th fret of the high E. Let it down. Then you're going to go 15, 17 and bend it back up. And then you've got the same kind of thing again, but in this rhythm. And the only thing that's different is you don't hit another 17 before you bend it back up. It's just the bent note. And then back to the 14th fret with the index finger. Just a couple of little bits to do and then we are done with the solo. Starting where we left off the previous lick on the 14th fret of the high E. A uh, very quick hammer on pull off, index second finger to the 15. Then I grab the 17 on the B with the third finger, back to the 14. You could play that here, but um, it's sometimes nice to play things in different places, so I went for this. And then we're going to grab the 17 on the B again, 14, 15, 17, and slide that back a fret. And then you've got the 15th fret twice, and it's not too quick. Grab the 17th fret of the B again, and then a very quick slide back from 15 to 14. Then come down to the 14th fret of the G with the second finger, before hitting the 13th fret of the B with the first, and sliding back to the 12. And once you come back to the 12th fret, you can hit that twice. And then the very final part to learn goes like this. Very simply, 14th fret of the G to 12, and then back and forth between the 14th fret of the D and the 12 on the G. Hit the 12th fret of the G again, just once, singular. And then we're going to slide to the 14th fret of the D, and then hit the 12th fret of the G, then the B. Altogether, that goes like this. Straight after that ginormous guitar solo, we've got some very fast and fiddly palm muted riffs. I'm going to show you one of them. If you want the other one, do one to Patreon. Okay, here we go. You're going to start with your index finger barring across the 14th fret of the B and the G, and then third finger on the 16th fret of the D, creating that F sharp minor triad. Palm mute quite heavily across all three strings and you're going to double pick the first two and then single pick the last note. Okay, after you've done that, move it down a whole tone, two frets, to E minor. Exactly the same thing. And then you're going to pick 14th fret of the G and 12th fret. Okay, next time it starts where you left off on the E minor. And then we move back whole tone again, but you're gonna put your second finger 
in the middle to create a D major triad. And then the last two notes are going to be 12, 11 on the G. In and around that, you've got a little lead line as well. And again, that's on the tab if you want it. Now the last thing that we're going to learn that I would consider to be an integral main part to this tune and worth your time and effort is this ferociously fast picked riff um, towards the end of the tune that goes over these funky chords. Uh, that's my own spin on the rhythm just for the example that I put in the video. But this is the line. It's a proper workout, especially when you've got six foot five action like me. But no excuses. So we're going to start seventh fret of the A string with the index finger. I'm walking up box shape, pentatonic star. We're going to go seven, nine, seven, nine, seven on the G. Bit of palm mute in if you want. So I've alternated my picking up until that point, and then I'm going to hit another down on the ninth fret of the G. I'm going to go nine, seven, nine. That's just the way I like to pick it. That extra down at the top, um, I feel like just gives it a little bit more de definition. Okay, and then you're going to do the same kind of thing, but moving down to the fifth fret of the A string. Here we're going to be using index and pinky for the whole thing. So five, seven, and then four, seven, four, seven. Here we walk all the way back down to the fourth fret of the D string. I like to use index and pinky there throughout because I feel that like as the hand opens up, you're not breaking your stride. Uh, you could use index third and then shift, but um, I don't know, index pinky just for the whole thing um, just makes more sense to me. Why do they do that? It's completely useless and pointless. Who pours tea like that? So that was my take on Achilles' Last Stand by Led Zeppelin. I have to put an intentional space between last and stand because my mouth doesn't actually allow me to say it any faster. I don't know why. If you're still here and you made it and you've got it all down, well done, it is a whopper. I know I always say that things are whoppers, but this was like, it's proper. It's a proper whopper, okay? It's big. Now, if you enjoyed learning with me today, hit the like button. I am always going on about this, but honestly, hitting that like button sends this video into the stratosphere, okay? Huge, huge numbers. Hit subscribe so, you know, you find out when we're doing this again. Bell next to it, definitely. We'll find out. You get alerted the next time that we're doing it. Bing. But not all the time. Only when I'm uploading videos, not when I'm like going out shopping and stuff. And uh, yeah, comment down below. Would be wonderful. Feedback. Constructive criticism. No trolling. We don't like trolls here. No trolls allowed, okay? If you're struggling and you're a bit baffled with some of the parts and you'd like some extra help information, Come and get the tab over on my Patreon and chat one-on-one -on -one and with all the other lovely people that are over there um, helping each other out and sharing stories. 
you get access to Discord, you can now join the channel in the bottom corner. This is a hard sell, okay? This is a hard sell. I just wanna wrap up this video by saying a massive hello to all the new subscribers that joined whilst I was taking a little bit of a break over Christmas and New Year. And uh, yeah, thank you for all your comments and support. I'm gonna get stuck into them and uh, reply to as many as I can. And yeah, we're gonna start 2022 like we ended 2021. Big. Yeah.